Mr. Chomps, I told you that you can't be in these videos. Greetings, Sentinels fans. A couple weeks ago, we did the sexiest man alive. Well, now it's time for the Miss Multiverse pageant. Same as last time. Characters were judged by consensus in the letters page discord with scores of 0 through 4. 0 being no no, and 4 being yes yes. Again, nobody scored a perfect 4, but there have been more contestants that got 3.5s. Though interestingly, my honorable mentions list is going to be just as big as last time. Now before we begin, a public service announcement. Breaking news! Members of the hero team Daybreak tried to sneak into the pageant. Since they couldn't provide proof of age, they were turned away. As a reminder, we do not allow participants younger than 18 years of age in this pageant. And without further ado, let's get to the competition! Number 10, Young Legacy. And you'd be surprised how much competition there was for the 10th place spot. A lot of my favorite characters were in the running. This legacy might be new, but she kicks butt and looks good doing it. Pauline Felicia Fields Parsons entered college at the end of the multiverse era and full adulthood at the start of the RPG. She is a bright spot in everyone's lives, an idealistic new hope for the future. Number 9, Blood Countess Bathory. And now for a complete 180. The vampire, Elizabeth Bathory, is a woman based on the historical serial killer of the same name. Bathory looks good for a woman who is several hundred years old, and you can't deny the sexy, gothy Dracula vampire vibe. Number 8, Knife. My personal favorite, but I was outvoted when we were doing these lists. This gal has it all. Height, enthusiasm, and engaging, if somewhat difficult to understand, accent, a no-nonsense attitude, and gorgeous red hair. It's always the redheads. I am not sure if I should be stunned by her beauty, or if I should run for the hills because she is terrifying. Number 7, Misinformation. Never underestimate the secretary. This is the first of our 3.5s. Emilia Twain sports a few different major looks in the multiverse timeline. She has her secretary outfit, her villain costume, and her team villain costume. Hard not to go wrong with the classic secretary look, but I think it's her team villain version where she shines. She gets the femme fatale, pretty, elegant, and dangerous look, as well as emulating the Phantom of the Opera with that half mask. The only issue with her look is her scarring, and unlike Stuntman, it is actually pretty disfiguring. However, she certainly reacts to it better than Stuntman does. She puts on a face covering that works with her aesthetic. Ansel slapped on a bandage that completely clashes with the rest of his aesthetic. Dude, you're an actor. You've used makeup before. Do you not know how that stuff works? But yeah, misinformation? Good job. No matter what you're doing, you always look fabulous. Number 6, Arataki Haka. Woof. I don't shy away from muscular women, and dear lord does Arataki have no equal in that department. I probably put her higher, except I don't really know much about her. She's still new to the universe. But we do see traces of the old Haka in her, especially in her enthusiasm for a good fight. I mean, just look at this picture. She's having so much fun, it's almost adorable. Number 5, The Operative. You know what this list needs? Ninjas. The Operative is one of the most accomplished hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the whole multiverse. Her lithe frame conceals a deadly determination that you had better not cross. Number 4, Galactra. Oh hey, an alien. I was wondering when we get one of those. There is a reason I keep returning to this image, and Captain Cosmic doesn't have much to do with it. This impulsive mistress of the cosmos knows what she wants and has the drive to get it. She is an enthusiastic and passionate individual, and woe upon those who draw her ire. Number 3, Snare. Wait, who? This is the paraplegic member of the Crackjaw crew. But you see this picture. She doesn't look bad, but that doesn't war warrant her being on the list. Maybe I should check the RPG? Oh, yeah. Her new look as a member of Hellfire has certainly improved things. She rocks that goth aesthetic. Number 2, Ermine. This thief will totally steal your heart. Yeah, I know that was the corniest thing I could possibly say. Ermine certainly has the lithe, if petite, figure, at least compared to the other characters, is certainly athletic, leans into the dangerous type look, and is clearly having fun doing the things she does. But does that warrant her getting this high up on the list? Let's check her look in the RPG. Whoa, okay, that's quite the glam up. She seems to have upgraded her look to something more techy, but it seems looking good is still important to her, even on jobs that require her to be unseen. And now, before we get to number one, let's do the honorable mentions. Blister, formerly Ember of the Crackjaw crew. She is another member of the Hellfire Band, and she goes all out on that look. 
Isis, a spellcaster from the Egyptian pantheon, the Ennead. She goes all in on the devil theming. She cultivates that succubus look and wears it well. Fanatic, one of the contenders for 10th place and one of my favorites. I was so sad to bump her off the list. This Brazilian beauty has a huge presence around her, inspiring awe and terror in equal measure. The Wraith, another contender for the number 10 spot. The Wraith has sported a lot of costumes over her career, and each one showing off her assets well. If I had to choose a favorite, I'd go with the classic costume, but I do really like the Freedom 5 variant version. Heroic Luminary. In case you were wondering if we were sticking to the regular universe, while Ivana looks great, I don't think she has the je ne sais quoi that Ivan does. It's still enough to get her in the running for 10th place, though. Skyscraper. Another alien. Poor Portia can't catch a break sometimes, but her looks and her adorably sweet and kind demeanor puts her in the running for 10th place. Night Mist. Can't go wrong with the noir feel, or the miniskirt. Night Mist's smooth and collected attitude and her ethereal feel put her in competition with the other characters here. Did you think I was kidding in the Young Legacy section? There was a lot of competition for that spot. But now with Night Mist, we close off the honorable mentions. So for number one, we move from master to student. Number one is Harpy. While the matriarch was too young to participate, Harpy enters adulthood before the Oblivion event. Her youthful energy, sense of responsibility, and her amazing fashion sense earn her this number one spot. And while the Sentinels of the Night art isn't canon, I still think Harpy's picture there is worth showing. Whew. Is it, uh, is it getting hot in here? So I have reached my spellbound conclusion that the winner for today is Harpy. And that concludes this year's Miss Multiverse pageant. We hope you have enjoyed this program, and I hope to see you soon. Take care, friends. Let's see if I can do this one without getting embarrassed too much. <laughs> And you can't deny the sexy, gothy, Dracula vampire vibe. Wow, I got that in one take. Oh, God, really? One sec. I should remember that's one of the issues of this room compared to the other setups I have. Whew. Is it getting hot in here? Am I saying this naturally? <laughs>